first item on the agenda I'm adoption adopt the agenda. Tom, motion to adopt the agenda is there a second second Tom seconds the motion any questions on the agenda not all in favor say aye aye, aye. Opposed? motion carried all right uh, next item approval of the May 8th minutes is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented motion to approve the May 8th minutes second okay, Rob is, and Fred seconds any changes to the May 8th minutes? Not all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Next, authorization to pay bills. Mr. Fouché. Uh, Mr. Morak, I move to authorization to pay bills in the amount of $1,094,398.22. Oh, yeah. Rob seconds. Any questions or discussion on the bills? All right, if not, please cast your ballots. <laughs> okay, all voting yes. All right, next uh, public comment. First, I'd like to welcome Boy Scout Troop 59, Jackie Spurl, if you would come up, say a little bit about the troop and introduce them. My name is Jackie Spillman. I am here with Boy Scout Troop 59 of New London. I'm here with Tyler Paprin, Vincent Klackow, and Caleb Tickler. Uh, we are here, um, we are working on a merit badge, citizen in the community. Very good, thank you. I'm sorry, Mrs. Uh, Spillman. All right, is there anyone else in the audience who wishes to make a comment tonight? Yes, come on up. Hello, I'm Sergeant Wills and I'm running for Sheriff Wapaka County. <clears throat> a little uh, history on me, I'm a 24-year veteran from Wapaka County. I currently am a patrol sergeant for the last 12 years. My duties include our training. Uh, I am the training coordinator as well as the trainer. I'm also in charge of Stonebill Patrol, ATV Patrol, and as of recently, Water Patrol. <clears throat> I want to speak a little bit about my platform. Uh, school safety, as we know, is the most important thing in the United States right now. Currently, our department has a walkthrough program. We also have a program where the officers will stop off at events, check out while on duty. Also meet with the teachers and administrators monthly. What I propose we do is never close the book and say we're all done with school safety. We spend a lot of time locking these kids inside to keep them safe but we never talk about what we're going to do when the kids come out those doors swing open these these people uh, that want to destruct aren't just going to go home we need to think about what what we're going to do they may be waiting in the school buses and that's the perfect spot they can take out as many kids as they want they know they're not going to come out of their lives so it doesn't matter to them so what we need to do is work on the outside things uh school buses events we need to real, really uh, pay close attention. We need to be proactive as much as we can, never reactive. And like I said, ongoing, never close the book. I know uh, I applaud New London PD for what they have developed over the last uh, month, I believe. They've created two positions for part-time officers to uh, fill the other schools, keep the one uh, officer in the main school. That's something I also propose for the county. It's, it's something that we can work with all the departments come up with the perfect programs for school safety also work with them and help provide or find part-time officers to work in these schools we have a lot of county schools that right now are not they do not have uh, school resource officers also i want to talk about workplace violence we never talk about uh, what about the bullies in, in the workplace we've got a lot of them we got drug use how do uh, how does personnel deal with that? How do the employees deal with it? supervisors? We need to react, uh, focus with the administration there on problem employees and potential problem employees and how they pose a threat to their business. We need to know how they can anonymously report 
I'll issue the immediate report or have them constant monitoring through the safety of the of the whole business also uh, personal and home safety I guess I'd like to say if elected sheriff I'd like to have two meetings throughout the year in three different spots New London Manoa and Wapaka talk to this have our staff here have one from uh, patrol one from corrections one from our communication center talk about what we're doing what we're gonna do and what we're spending our money on we need to show transparency to everybody in the county they need to see who we are as well also that's gonna let you as citizens tell us your concerns and we can we can talk about the concerns you can get information you can go away well informed I think that's an important part of being a sheriff in Wapaka County uh, drug use we all know drug heroin is, is a huge problem in Wapaka County currently we have two drug officers working tirelessly uh, sometimes 20 hours in a shift come back after four just to finish reports they're trying to stop drug use and drug dealing problem is can we really arrest our way through this I think uh, we can sure make an impact but we also need to talk about uh, prevention and that starts at, at the, uh, the schools the teachers uh, the parents and the, and the, um, the uh, students as well uh, right now they have a drug court which I talked to the drug court coordinator it's a 14 month program so far it's working well with the nine people that are enrolled a couple of them have faltered but they're not going to uh, unenroll them they, they keep them in and uh, they continue the monitoring twice a week I believe they have to do a urine test for drugs but what's going to be the big thing about this is when they're done the nine people that are currently in it they're going to be testament to how well this works to other drug addictions or drug users as well uh, budget what we need to do with uh, the budget for the sheriff's department is have a better process to ensure an effective and efficient budget we need to stop unnecessary spending spend money on our needs and not our wants if there's something that we really need today um, that's perfect but if we want it we can wait till the next budget and I say uh, a need would only be something that is um, paramount to the community or the officers safety um, I guess that's about it I'd like to thank everyone for listening to me and uh, have a great night and also uh, August 14th is the voting date for the primary all right thanks thank you sergeant any Willis? questions at all or don't we take questions or? any questions for the sergeant I guess not right. okay thank you thank you all right uh, next we have Maureen Halson representing Ehlers Associate Incorporated to inform us about the sale of bonds. Yes, I'm, I, do I need to, can you hear me? Okay, great, I'm on, okay. Great, thank you for that introduction. When you sell bonds, especially two issues, you're, we're um, gonna be using lots of paper here. So you've got two packets that we're gonna review with, sale, with the results of your sale, as well as um, very long resolutions too that, you'll, uh, that are on your um, agenda for consideration tonight. So uh, the first item that we wanted to, or just some background here, um, I, I think it's been about two years, I think I was here in your, for your uh, bond sales in 2016. Um, I worked with Phil Cawson, at Ellers on the New London team. Um, he was here last month to discuss the borrowing for the general obligation issue and then the sewer, water, and electric utility issue. <clears throat> um, those resolutions were authorized with move forward with the sale. The sale was held this morning at 1030 for both issues. Um, we're gonna start by talking about the general obligation debt issue and those results today and then we'll walk through the um, utility issue. <clears throat> and then the resolutions will all answer any questions and then the resolutions will be on um, for, for your consideration tonight so um, for the it'll be, I, it's identified as the 2018 a issue this is the, the general obligation uh, corporate purpose bonds 
and the amount of three million eighty thousand dollars. This is just a refresher. This is to finance your street improvement projects, Division Street, and then your pool improvement projects. Um, at ten thirty this morning, we received four bids. The winning bid was D. A. Davison out of Denver, Colorado, with a true interest cost of three point four one two three percent. Um, that came in um, just about half a percent under what we had estimated last month. Um, you know, excuse me, I wrote, uh, that actually this one came in about 13 um, basis points or um, just about one tenth of one percent um, less than the interest rate was a little bit less. I, I got my results confused between the utility and the GEO issue. The GEO had a much um, more reduction in the interest rate that was shown. This came in about um, about one tenth of one percent less than what was shown last month. The other important numbers are included on that page after the cover, the summary of the results. We're going to look at those in some exhibits later, later in the report. Um, and the next page that I wanted to look at is going to start on page two through four. These are going to be the results of today's sale. So the winning bidder, D.A. Davison, um, is, um, there's also some syndicates here, Northland Securities and Hilliard Lions that are going to be placing um, your bond along with D.A. D. A. Davison and partnership um, placing your bonds in the secondary market. You have their true interest rate that they offer on the far right, the 3.4123%. Um, and then the interest rates that they've offered over that 20 year period of time. <clears throat> the other three bids are included on page three and four if you want to take a look and see um, what, what else was offered. On page five in our sale day report is the rating, or I'm sorry, the rating report by Moody's Investor Services. Um, as part of it, as we've the city in the past, we've had your issues rated by Moody's, um, and similarly, this issue was rated. Um, and they, Moody's affirmed the city's rating at an A1. Um, just wanted to provide a little, or in my conversation with Phil, he wanted me to provide a little bit of feedback um, to the city <clears throat> about that result. The, he had a discussion with the rating agent um, who let, him, let Phil know that there was significant discussion at the, the rating committee <coughs> level. Uh, when they were discussing the, all the details about the city, um, there's a, you know a, a panel a panel discussion that happens at Moody's before they release a rating, um, and they mentioned that they wanted to let Phil know that the city was on track for a potential upgrade in the future. They don't include an outlook on um, on your on, on this report, um, but you ha have had positive. Um, improvement in certain factors um, related to your tax base growth you, since since your, you last visited with them two years ago some of your wealth and uh, socioeconomic numbers um, and then an increase in your liquidity significant increase in your liquidity and fund balance um, but there you some of the factors that they list here on page six um, they talk about some credit strengths and challenges and then items that could lead to an upgrade or a downgrade um, is that they um, you they mention that you have a, a higher a higher debt burden a higher debt burden um, and still socioeconomic numbers that um, are a little bit lower maybe than some of the other um, communities that are within that upgrade category. Um, but as I mentioned before, they talked about your your strong growth in your fund balance, um, you, that you've had strong growth in your tax base, and to continue those um, those area of growth. And maybe if you have additional growth in your wealth indices, you may you may be in a position when you um, go for a rating. That, um, I I, under, I think that you're planning on go, um, 
issuing debt in about three years again. That if you can sh show a, a strong trend in those areas, that there could be t potential for an upgrade as well. Okay, um, so that's going to go through. So the rating report gives a lot of great information on the city um, that I would encourage you to read. But the last two pages I wanted to go through are page 10 and 11 with the results of today's sale. Page 10 is our sizing worksheet. And um, we have both a, the utility issue and the geo issue. So if you could pay attention to the first column, uh, with, which states 2018 geo issue, and then the column highlighted in yellow. <clears throat> we have today's final sale results compared to Phil's preliminary numbers that he went through last month. Um, the borrowing size remained the same at the $3,080,000 amount, um, but the winning bid from DA Davidson included a premium bid, which I think we've had in the past, and with um, that was about $123,000. With that premium bid, there was, um, we did two things. One, we were able to make a deposit to your project fund of about $48,000, so that will help with any contingencies for your Division Street or pool upgrade project. Um, or any other projects related to those t those purposes. So if you have another street project that you um, wanted to be able to use those funds for, you would have that, that much, about $50,000 available um, to use for your projects. You also are going to have a deposit to the debt service fund, about $75,000. <clears> On the next page, page 11, we're, we are going to look at the tax impact of this of today's final sale results, and we'll also I'll point out where that um, deposit to the debt service fund is going to here. So on the left, we have your, this is a similar worksheet to what you saw last month. We have your existing debt payments, um, and then in the middle under the blue column are today's final sale results. That $75,000 we've shown to be applied toward your interest payments in year 2018 and 2019. Um, and then also on this impact worksheet, we've, we've used a placeholder for a 2021 financing for $6 million. Um, so together we have that, um, the impact, the debt service levy and debt service rate impact of the new borrowing in addition to that borrowing three years from now, what that would look like. And so in 20, what we show here in 2018 is that there will be an, um, an increase in the levy and the rate and then a um, inclining or a increase as you move forward and the height of that is to occur right around 2021 and 2022 in the first few years of that new six million dollar issue so just want to be able to provide you a holistic picture of not only what your plan what the results of today's sale are but what what the, this will look like over the next three-year three period of time. On the bottom of the page, uh, we have today's sale results compared to the pre-sale estimates last month. The interest rates were, or the total interest cost came in a little bit higher than what was reviewed last month, about $17,000 more. But with that premium bid and the deposit, there was about $50,000 additional for your projects and about um, 75000 available that you don't need to levy that, that, uh, that will be applied to your interest payments. Overall, you came in about $31,000 better than what you approved last month. So th there's a resolution tonight to approve the sale of these general obligation bonds in the amount of $3,080,000. The other sale results that we want to look at is the other packet that I provided or that was handed out to you today. Um, this sale was for, this is a utility revenue bond issue in the amount of $3,400,000 in sewer, water, electric system, mortgage revenue bonds. First page after the cover is a summary of today's results. 
Um, this is just a re refresher. This is for um, the purpose of this financing is to pay for your well project. We took the bid similar to the other sale. Um, at 10.30 this morning, there were four interested bidders. The winning bidder was Bar Bar Bernardi Securities out of Chicago, Illinois, with a true interest rate of 3.5342%. Now, this is the issue that had about, I would say, just under half a percent less than what we had seen last month. So, so very nice um, savings in the interest rate. Then all the important numbers are included on this page. We'll look again at the exhibits. Um, page two through four are today's sale results. Um, we have the interest rates that Bernardi offered over 20 years in the middle of the page, and then their true interest rate at the 3.5342%. On page five, we have a ra uh, rating report, so similar to the city's rating report, um, we went through the uh, we went through the rating process here. Moody's affirmed the utility at an A3 rating, which is just what the last the last time you went out to borrow the same rating. So just for comparison purposes, the city's at an A1 in that single A rating category by Moody's the utility is two notches down. So there's your A1, there's an A2, and then utility is at A3, which is what we normally see with comparing a city's rating to a, um, a utility. So that that's um, in line with what we've seen in the past for you. So page 11, our sizing worksheet, similar to what we just saw for the geo issue. We have your revenue issue on the far right um, now and comparing today's sale results this, that column is actually not in yellow as it should be but you just um, it's the far right column compared to the preliminary estimates um, this issue also received a premium bid similar to the geo issue um, what we did though with that it um, premium bid was we reduce the um, borrowing size by $45,000. Um, there was some issuance costs that came in a little bit less than estimated, uh, but mostly that was the downsizing was related to the premium. Um, the next page, page 12, is our, in our, I would say, the debt service impact to the utility. So on the left, we have si the system projected revenues um, and then your existing debt payments. And then in the yellow column are today's final results. Um, on the bottom of the page, you can see how these compare to what was authorized last month. With that reduction in the borrowing size of 45,000 and the significant reduction in those the interest rate um, together you were able to you came about you came out about two hundred thousand dollars better than what was authorized last month about two hundred thousand dollars less in total borrowing costs for the utility um, and what we were able to do is with that reduction in the um, borrowing size we took some principal payments off of those first five years um, knocked those down a little bit so your coverage ratio is pretty much is um, pretty similar over the next five years and only improves as you're paying off more and more debt. Um, again, we have a resolution for approval to, or for consideration tonight, and uh, the amount of three million four hundred thousand dollars in sewer, water, and electric system mortgage revenue bonds. I'm happy to answer any questions anyone may have. Any questions for Marie? I guess maybe sure. eight five of the what, utility issue utility or the geo. Or the Sorry, geo. Geo. Okay. I guess, yeah. Yes. I guess the rating that, report. You know, uh, it was uh, <coughs> under uh, like loss of a big uh, big customer. That uh, what do you do about that? So I just want to make sure, are we talking about the GO issue or the utility issue for the loss of a big customer? 
I got the utility. Utility, okay. And that was one item I had put a note here I forgot to mention. Is I that, far ahead of you? No, you're, you're right in line. I'm glad you brought it up because I wanted to mention it. Um, so they, they did not indicate that there was necessary, for the utility issue, that there was, um, you were necessarily going to be considered for an upgrade compared to how um, the discussion that was had for the, the city's GO issue. Um, and I think the main reason that that is, or one of the items that they've mentioned here, I think to your point, is that you have a larger, you have more of a concentrated um, big area. Of, what was that? Is it a big area too, right? The city, a lot of people involved. Yeah, it, it's a more concentrated user base. So if you had more diversity or growth in your user base, you know, that may be may that, that would potentially put you in a position to have more um, upward pressure on your uh, rating or upward movement, I should say. Okay, any other questions? Yeah. Rules in our industrial park definitely would help. <laughs> what was that? Rules in industrial parks. Yeah, yep, exactly. More users, more utility users, larger size users, exactly. Those type in, um, in varying industries, too, yeah, would help, too. It isn't just about taxes. It's about users here. Correct. So for the utility one, I think, you know, maybe to, to your point, were you reading off one of the items that said it could lead to a downgrade. So a loss of a major utility user. So the um, rating agency is assessing the risk of the utility making these debt service payments over the next 20 years. And so when you have a more concentrated user base in the event, especially if it's you know specific to a certain industry, any loss of that um, user would significantly impact the utility and would uh, put pressure on your, the ability to make those debt service payments or keep the coverage ratio that you're required to keep on this issue. So that that's a risk factor and that's something that they mentioned and that and I think you, know, you can understand hopefully you can understand why that would that be, could cause that some could cause changes. Tom, the best example would be you lost the Pudo cheese and your sewer rates had to go up to cover the loss. If it, and if we lose, 69% of our system is large customer and it's basically Kerwood and Hillshire Tyson now. If you lose one of those, it's a huge impact on the revenue stream to the utility. So it, there is always that risk when you get rated and evaluated by bondholders that you could lose a large customer and have a financial burden. Okay. Thank you. Uh, now we need a motion to approve a resolution awarding the sale of three million eighty thousand general obligation corporate purpose bonds to D. A. Davison. So moved. Second. Uh, Lori, Rob seconds. Any further questions or discussion? If not, please cast your ballots. All voting yes, motion is carried. And we also need a motion um, to approve the sale warding of 3,440,000 sewage, water, and electric system mortgage revenue bonds series 2018B of the City of New London to Marnardi Securities. Is there a motion to that so effect? So move. Uh, Ron makes the motion. Is there a second? Fred seconds it. Any further questions or discussions on that? The number is 3.4. The preliminary number is oh. 3.44. Yep. The final is 3.4, right? Correct. Thank Did you. you make that? Did he, I, I guess that's what I heard. Is that not what? Right, okay. The, the, the agenda. Oh, the agenda. The the got it. 3.445. Right. That's actually 3.4. That's correct. Understood. So, again, what? Yep, be safe. The agenda had three million four hundred forty-five thousand. What we are approving is three million four hundred forty thousand. Three million four hundred thousand. Four hundred. Three million four hundred thousand. Okay. We saved forty-five thousand. Save forty-five thousand. Oh, three million four hundred thousand. Okay, thank you. Glad we got that straight. All right. Uh, any further questions, discussion? If not please cast your ballots.
All voting yes, motion has been carried. All right, thank you, Marie. Great, thank you. We appreciate the ability to, or the opportunity to work with the city and the utility on this issue. All right, next we move on to standing special committees, Board of Public Works, Mr. Barrington. Board of Public Works, got on 6 4 18. First item was wastewater treatment plant upgrade. Mr. Gruel <coughs> briefly updated the committee on his monthly <coughs> treatment plant report. The next item was review a bid tab and recommend award of a construction contract for improvements to sanitary sewer lift station number two. Mr. Gruel and Tony Capel presented the bid tabs for reconstruction of lift station number two. There was a total of three bids ranging from a base bid of 399,000 to 488,000. Mr. Gruel and Mr. Hearth recommended moving forward with the project and award the contract to the low bidder PTS Contractors Incorporation in the amount of $339,000 plus a $5,900 alternate bid to include stainless steel piping in the project. That will be brought to committee tonight. The next item is review the wastewater treatment plant 2017 compliance maintenance annual report and consider for action a resolution approving report. Mr. Gruel reviewed the report which is required by state code and committed that the plant received an A on the report. The council will need to pass a resolution that was made and seconded that will be brought to the council tonight. The next item, approve professional services agreement to hire McMahon and Associates for improvements on the R railroad crossings at High Street and Industrial Loop Road. Mr. Hurth explained that a discussion with the CN representative regarding the improvements to the railroad crossings at High and Industrial Loop Road was <coughs> provided the permit applications <coughs> on, for, on CN's property, Canadian National. Thank you, the cost estimate for the project is estimated at $118,562 with a contingency cost of 10% and proposing to use wheel tax monies to finance the project. Mr. Hurth is recommending hire McMahon to create design and bid specification for the project, fill out CN applications and bid out the project. Motion made and second to bring that to council tonight. It'll cost us $15,000. The next item was award a contract to Hoffman Cemetery Services Limited Liability doing business as Tony Cemetery Services for 2018 grass and vegetation cutting services. Mr. Hurth shared the department received several lawn grass weed complaints in the last few weeks and notices have been sent out to property owners regarding these complaints. Proposals were requested for grass and vegetation cutting services. One proposal was received from Hoffman Cemetery Services. This is the same contractor who was awarded the contract last year, kept the rates the same, $38 an hour. Mr. Hurth is recommending the award of the 2018 contract to Huffman Cemetery Limited Liability doing business as Tony Cemetery. This is motion made and seconded. This will be brought to council tonight. The next item was a director's memo. Mr. Hurth reported on other projects that are already in progress or beginning soon. Eric Giffins from the wastewater treatment plant completed four years <coughs> of service on May 30th. Next. Other matters the next week agenda none. I make a motion to accept an ordinance to. That ain't mine. 
I make a motion to accept the contract from PTS contracts in amount of four hundred and four thousand nine hundred dollars for improvements to the sanitary lift station number two. Okay. Thank you. Second. There's a second. Uh, Lori, second. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Motion's been made and seconded to award the contract of PTS Contractors Incorporated in the amount of four hundred four thousand nine hundred dollars for improvements to sanitary sewer lift station number two. Any questions on that? Tom? that paid out of the sewer funds? Yes, I think so, right? Is that how they paid? Yes, we believe so. Yes. yes. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, if not, please cast your vote. All voting yes. Motion carried. I make a motion to accept the resolution accepting wastewater treatment plant 2017 compliance maintenance annual report. Second. Sir, uh, Dennis seconds it. Any uh, further questions? The motion has been made again toward uh, a resolution accepting the WP, WWTP 2017 compliance maintenance annual report. Any further questions? If not, please cast your vote. All voting yes. Motion carried. I make a motion to hire McMahon and Associates to design improvements for bid to the railroad crossings at High Street. And that should be Industrial Park too, isn't it? Industrial Park. Oh, just the one? Okay. High Street in the amount of seven thousand five hundred dollars. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Rob seconds. Okay, motion's been made to hire McMahon and Associates to design improvements for the bid to the railroad crossing at High Street for an amount of not to exceed seven thousand five hundred. Any questions or discussions on that? John? I'm, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have a question at this point, but I'm not part of that committee. Is, does the railroad pitch in anything for that? I mean, it's their tracks. We, we tried. <clears throat> yeah. We got them on the first one. Uh, that, that was a Deacon Avenue they helped us with. And we're working with them. Um, we would probably have to do the outside, but they would be responsible for the middle section. So we have to go through this application process with them to go on to the next step. So okay. we designed it, go through this process. Just curious uh, if they should, yeah. you know. Well, yeah, you'd think they would. <laughs> Any other rare question? Rare. Timetable on that? So, the design, um, design can start up in the next month or so. Um, application with the Canadian National and their permitting process. Yeah. A longer time, you know, it takes for them to go the process. So, um, and then going out to bid. Okay. Yeah, time to tell. Any other questions? Tom? Is that coming from wheel tax money, some of that? Yes. Yes. Does that deplete quite a bit of the wheel tax money or? No. No. No, we were projecting. We won't know until we get the bids in. <laughs> there was an estimate cost in your packet, in the public works packet, um, for the project itself. Was it 110,000? Yeah, I think. For, for both of them? I, I don't yeah. have the number. 100, 100, 100, it's like 118.5 something. Is that what it was? That's, that what I, yeah. I, that's what I'm looking at here. So that's the estimate for McMahon, what the that project would be. That would be the, the proportion. Out of the 180, and then House Road is the other one we're kind of looking at with those funds as well. Mm -hmm. On House Road, is there any sharing cost with, with the my there? <laughs> Yes, we're working on that. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Not, please cast your vote. All voting yes, motion carried. Okay, I make a motion to hire McMahon and Associates to design improvements for bid on the railroad crossing at Industrial Loop Road in the amount not to see, exceed $7,500. Second. The second was Ron. Okay, thank you. Any questions, uh, again, on to hire McMahon and Associates to design improvements or bid to the railroad crossing at Industrial Loop for an amount not to exceed 7500 Was that just a proposal, not even a bid maybe, at that price? This is for them 
to design improvement for beds. Okay, that, yeah, okay, my fault. Any other questions? Not, please cast your vote. Oh, voting yes, motion carried. I make a motion to award Huffman Cemetery Services LLC a contract for 2018 grass and vegetation cutting services at the rate of $38 per hour. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded to award Hoffman Cemetery Services the contract for a grass and vegetation cutting at a rate of $38 per hour. Any questions on that? If not, please cast your vote. All voting yes. Motion carried. And that's all I have tonight. Oh, thanks, Mike. <laughs> Next, moving on to finance and personnel, Mr. Fichet. Thank you, Mr. Mora. Uh, a very short meeting on Wednesday, June 6, 2018 at 4.30 p.m. Meeting was called to order by Chairman Morak, um, and the agenda was approved. Uh, next, there was a motion made by uh, Mr. Barrington and seconded by Mr. O'Connell to recommend to council approval of the annual license list uh, with the deletion of item 66 or 69. It was one item that was entered twice, and the motion carried unanimously. Uh, the list is attached to everyone's packet tonight um, next the finance directors reports were reviewed <coughs> and the city's administrators reports was discussed and then the July finance and personnel committee meeting will be held a day early due to the 4th of July holiday so please make a note of that um, that being Tuesday July 3rd at 4 30 p.m. There being no public comment or further business, a motion was made by Mrs. Dean and seconded by Barrington to adjourn, carried 5-0. The committee adjourned at 4.56 p.m., probably one of our shorter meetings of the year. This is true. And that's all we have from finance, and I recommend or I make a motion to approve the yearly License list, an amended list. Second. There's oh, we do have an ordinance. We take um, the ordinance first. This is an ordinance that we went through a month earlier, and that's why I didn't have it quite on my radar here. This is the second reading of an ordinance to amend section 9.42, joint municipal court for the city of New London and the city of Wywiga. Okay. And Jackie explained a month ago to the committee that this was... Um, a law change and some housekeeping stuff internally that we need to do to uh, now if somebody's interested in running for municipal judge they will need to go through Jackie uh, the county through that instead the filing of filing um, officer who they turn in their nomination papers to uh, would be the county clerk okay motion has been made sir a second so Fred uh, seconds it should I withdraw what I originally I was I, I skipped the judge ordinance and I went, I made a motion to approve the yearly license. I think I'll, yeah, we're just withdraw gonna take the my second, first. he can withdraw the motion. Yeah, so okay, we'll, withdraw the we'll, we're voting on the second reading of an ordinance we voted on a month ago. And so the ordinance to amend section 9.42 regarding filing officer for municipal judge. So that, that is my motion. All right. And there was a second. Any questions on that? Ordinance. Not please cast your vote. All voting yes. Motion carried. And now, John. Now, the anticipated yearly license list. <laughs> uh, I, I make a motion to approve the yearly license list and amended list as is. Second. Motion been made by John, second by Mike. Any questions? Uh, discussion on the yearly license list? If not, please cast your vote. Yes. All voting yes. And okay, thank you, John. 
Next, moving on to Parks and Recreation. Rob. Thank you, Mr. Warren. Parks and Recreation Committee met on June 5th with the agenda. Uh, there was no public comment, and so we proceeded uh, taking up consideration for action on an ordinance for amending section 9.17 sub 7e pier and dock docking regulations. Chad explained this action is a simple housekeeping item to include the new St. John's dock in the municipal code to regulate and enforce the amount of time, voters, and more at the docks. It was suggested to reword the verbiage as follows. Transient mooring is allowed on all public docks and piers for a collective total of 48 hours in a seven day period, except there is no overnight mooring allowed on any of the docks in the middle or western bays of the Riverside Boat Launch Facility, nor the launching area on the eastern bay at that facility. And uh, there was very little discussion on that, and the motion was made and seconded, and it carried, and that item is on tonight's agenda. And then there was a review of the tennis court's evaluation <coughs> report. Chad presented a rather involved evaluation report detailing the conditions of the t city's tennis courts. Chad will review the report with the school district as they use the courts for their tennis program and will evaluate how to move forward with maintenance and or replacement. Uh, committee uh, under director's report, there were no questions on the monthly reports or stats. And the following employees are recognized for their anniversaries. Uh, Mike Bachman for seven years, Ted Christian for three years, Steve Thompson completed two years, Gordon Gabrielson has completed four years, Don, Don Reinert has been with us for five years, and Jim Thorpe all of 16 years. There was no chairman's report or committee member report, and then Next month's agenda items uh, will be possibly discussing the award of contract for tree planting along Division Street. After that, the uh, committee proceeded to recess and proceed on down to the London Aquatics Fitness Center. And there was a motion made, and the committee did adjourn at that point, or recess. And then the committee subsequently reconvened, meeting at the new London Aquatics and Fitness Center. A motion was made and carried that we re-adjourn. And Chad proceeded to uh, take us on a, a very interesting tour of the Aquatics and Fitness Center that uh, I have to say it was, it was eye-opening. Uh, the, the wholesale change of that place is just wonderful. It's kind of literally entered into the 21st century. And we could tell from the, just the way things smelled from the pool the atmosphere and everything it's it's a wholesale change it's it's quite an improvement i encourage the uh, citizens to at least go down there try the pool and so forth it's <laughs> totally different well done um and then the committee subsequently adjourned at 6 45 p.m and there is an item on tonight's agenda and i would motion for waiving of rules to approve an ordinance, the subsequent ordinance, in one reading. Okay. Motion second. Sir, so second. Ron, uh, Ron, you second it? Yeah, okay. second. Uh, Ron seconded it. Motion was made to waive the rules to approve an ordinance in one reading and second it. Is there any questions on waiving the rules? If not, please cast your vote. All voting yes. I'd like to motion for an ordinance to amend section 9. Point, no, I have the wrong line here. Okay, here we go. Uh, adopt an ordinance to amend municipal code section 9.17 sub 7e to regulate the amount of time transient mooring is allowed. Is there a second? Second. Okay. okay. Uh, Lori, second it. Motion was made and seconded to uh, amend the municipal code section 9.17 subsection 7e to regulate the amount of time transient mooring is allowed. Any questions on that? What 
Tom? What's the time um, uh, limit at, at night or anything? 48 hours. You can park there for 48 hours right. in a seven day period. Contiguous. Yes. Not, don't worry about a daily thing. 48 hours total in a seven day period. So if someone comes up and stays overnight in London, that allows them to do that. Okay. Any other questions? If not, please cast your vote. All voting yes. Motion carried. That's all I have tonight, Mr. Okay. Moore. Thank you, Mr. Way. Next planning commission, Mr. Steinhorst. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the planning commission met on May 24th. Uh, meeting was called to order by Mayor D.C. at the time, so I had to miss that particular meeting. Uh, the agenda was adopted uh, for the minutes of the April 26, 2018 meeting were approved. Uh, first of all, we had a resolution to officially name Starlight Drive. Resolution to officially name Starlight Drive was presented by the Planning Commission initially this street was in the city of New London and the town of Muckwa's jurisdiction and had been known as Starlight, L-I-T-E, or Starlight, L-I-G-H-T, Drive, or Court. The city of New London now has complete jurisdiction of this road and to eliminate any confusion, a recommendation to officially name the street Starlight Drive is being made. The motion was made and seconded to officially uh, adopt that uh, naming carried 6-0. Secondly, we had a site plan review for Mid-State Asphalt for two managed storage buildings. Uh, Mid-State Asphalt has submitted a site plan to construct two mini storage buildings on a parcel of land located between McHenry Street and Avon Street. One of the proposed buildings will be 190 by 50 and the other will be 100 feet by 24 feet. The property is zoned M manufacturing and would allow this type of use. Motion was made and seconded to approve the site plan as presented. Next, we had a request for a garage to exceed 1,100 square feet and 15 feet in height. Uh, Forrest and Kirakotki of 512 East Hancock Street submitted a request for an alteration slash addition to the existing detached garage. The existing garage is 864 square feet. The proposal is to remove 288 square feet and add an additional 720 square feet, which will total 1,296 square feet. Uh, that's 196 square feet over the 1,100 square feet allowed by the zoning ordinance. The addition is also proposed to be 16 feet in height, which exceeds the 15 foot maximum height. Uh, motion was made and seconded to approve that request carried 6-0. <clears throat> Next, we had a request for rezoning from NR Natural Resources to B2 Highway Commercial for Dollar General. A request to rezone a parcel of land from NR Natural Resources the B2 Highway commercial for a new Dollar General store was presented. The adjoining parcel, Bucky's Restaurant, is zoned NRB2. Uh, Cindy Gollar suggested that this rezoning should be consistent with the adjoining parcel. Motion was made and seconded to rezone the parcel NR slash B2. Motion carried 6-0. <clears throat> Next was a proposal of an annexation of property from the Town of Liberty. Mr. Hanlon presented a site plan for a proposed annexation from the Town of Liberty to the City of New London. The owner would like to construct a new home and have access to city sewer and water. Two lots are proposed to be annexed with a combined total area of just over 0.8 acres. In addition, property to connect a future street from East Ridge to Glory Road, this is currently undeveloped land owned by Marv Schneider, will be included. The balance of the 10.5 acre parcel would remain in the Town of Liberty. 
The owner of the property wants to use the remaining land for agricultural purposes. The discussion that followed questioned whether or not city zoning would allow an agricultural use. Mr. Hanlon stated it would, but did not know exactly what would be permitted. It was the consensus of the members that the property should be annexed in whole if the zoning would allow the agricultural use. As such, no action was taken. Uh, Mr. Hanlon updated the members on several projects that were ongoing or upcoming and our next meeting will be on June 28th and we adjourned at 5.33 uh, p.m. I would move then for the resolution to officially name Starlight Drive for the City of New London. Is there a second? second. Fred seconds it. Motion is made and second to officially name the street Starlight Drive. Any questions? Has that whole area been annexed now? Not, not at all. Okay. Any other questions? If not. Please cast your vote. All voting yes. Motion carried. And that is all I have, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you, Ron. Next, we have economic development. Is it, uh, Thank Mr. O'Connell? I will be reading the minutes from Tuesday, May 29th, 2018, uh, meeting was 4 p.m. Uh, the meeting was called to order by Chairman Morak, actually at 4.30. And uh, the adoption of the agenda was approved. Bill Zinan from the firm marketing director updated the committee on that has been performed regarding the digital marketing effort. Bill distributed Report on the number of impressions that six current videos are receiving Facebook and YouTube. Well, the time period April 18th through May 25th, there's been over 63,000 impressions on Facebook and 41,000 on YouTube. It is very interesting to note that Hatton Park video has had over 41,000 impressions on Facebook. There's one, there's one more video to be prepared. It was the consensus of the group that the video will focus on new offering coming from Fox Valley Technical College titled The Adult Education and Family Learning. The program will be held at Washington Center. Bill was thanked for his presentation. Tammy Van Evenholman addressed the committee regarding the idea that she had to implement a committee bike rental op option similar to what other communities have. After considerable discussion, it was agreed that providing a bike rental service for the city would be a valuable asset. <clears throat> it was suggested that the Chamber of Commerce would host the bike rental operation. April at the Chamber will work with Tammy to bring back a plan for implementation of the bike rental program for the further consideration at the June Economic Development Co Committee meeting. Kent informed the committee regarding Tuesday, May 22nd meeting that he had with Randy Stadmuller, Ann Hunt, Kristen Cross, Bill Fleece, Virginia Slice, Dave Moark, and the mayor and Judy Radke to talk about finances for the proposed mixed use library. A determination still needs to be done how much funding will take place for the library. We need, an, we need to investigate if the city can lease a number of years and then buy it in the future. Randy is insistent that library is a kingpin to the development of property. We all agree that even with the bond debt limit for the city, there will need to be a referendum. The sooner the better. We need to determine if the school district is going to have a referendum this November. It's difficult to talk to the public about a project because there's so many different <coughs> unknowns. Randy will be at the June meeting to update the committee. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Tom. All right. Moving on then to minutes and reports. You have minutes and reports from the Housing Authority, Library and Museum, Police and Fire Commission, Utility, Cemetery Superintendent, and Building Inspector. Any questions or comments on those? 
All right, if not, moving on to reports of officers. Uh, Council President, the mayor has appointed Joyce Hoffman to the Board of Zoning Appeals. The mayor also made several appointments that we need to approve. April Kapitsky to the Police and Fire Commission and Terry Murphy to the Housing Authority Committee. So I need a motion to approve those two appointments. Second. Second. And the motion was made by uh, Fred, second by Tom. Any questions on those appointments? Not. Uh, all in favor? Uh, let's see. Uh, roll call, I guess. What roll call? Okay. Please cast your votes. Aye. All voting yes. Uh, and those appointments have been approved. All right. Then next, moving on to city administrator, Mr. Hager. Thank you. Um, I only have just a couple brief items. I, <clears throat> I think everybody's been real impressed with the docking and pier system that we was recently put in on, <clears throat> excuse me again, near the Pearl Street Bridge. And there's one last piece to it. I don't want anybody to misunderstand. There's a handicap ramp that gets put in there. It's not right now. There's some kind of steep stairs, but there's a full length ramp to allow handicapped accessibility to those. And that was subcontracted by the main contractor to another construction company. And that, that ramp should be arriving here imminently, any any day now, within the, I would hope within the next week. So you, know, you thought that the, the docking system and piers were great then, and we'll wait till we get the ramp that actually goes there. It'll make it a lot uh, easier for people to walk down to. And I, likewise, I believe for uh, handicapped accessibility as well. Along that same line, uh, we have a contract out for repairs to start on the river wall. And I'm not sure, Chad, if that's coming up real soon. It won't be long. And you're going to, the, the, the hardest part of working on the river wall was done already. And that's where the, the boat ramp is. That, that was the only section that's actually completely torn out and replaced. But the balance of the wall, all the way from the bridge here, Shano Street, down to Pearl Street, is going to receive kind of a facelift. There's going to be a lot of work done to it to uh, rebar. There's concrete spalling and so forth. So. Uh, that project's not done, and uh, it'll be starting pretty soon, and I think everything's going to look great when it's done. Very good. That's all I have, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you again. What about the high water? Now they're going to wait until it hopefully comes down. Um, there's some riprap involved, but um, yeah, it should, it should be coming down. All right. Uh, next, City Attorney, Mr. Waters. Well, thank you, Your Honor, but I have nothing specific to report to the okay. council unless they have any questions. Any questions? All right, if not, moving on to utility manager, Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Mr. Morak. Um, the Division Street uh, Road project, as far as the uh, water side of it is going, they should finish the water work all tomorrow. And we had planned to do some minor repairs and ended up with uh, some soil conditions, putting in 2,300 feet of water main in that project, made it quite a bit larger. But at this point, we have three tie-ins left and one water service on the segment from Beacon Avenue to Oak Street. So that should be wrapping up tomorrow. That's a good, good thing to have done. Uh, last Saturday, we had our recycling event and uh, we, we collected 59,274 pounds of electronics that were, will not go to landfill, but will, will be recycled. And of that, 540 televisions weighing 33,279 pounds were part of that process. And we had four wooden council TVs and about 11 big plasma projection TVs. They still come out of the woodwork, so it's amazing. Uh, well, this was the sixth event that the utility's done for recycling, and we, we are not planning to do it in 2019. The cost of that to the utility is $21,291 for that service to the city. So the people that uh, came were very, very appreciative, and it's a very good project for the utility. That's all I have, Your Honor. Very true. Really appreciate that. All right. Next, uh, Director of Public Services, Mr. Hurth. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, obviously, this is a, probably our busiest time of year, starting off on a recreational side. Um, our department has uh, started a lot of our recreational programs this week. Uh, just a reminder that our uh, weekly Camp Hatton series is available yet, and you can sign up for any week by the preceding Wednesday. 
Um, we also have a baby bus trip on Wednesday, June 20th. I see there are some spots available for this trip, so if you're interested, um, you can sign up online or contact us in the office and we can help you with that. Regular users probably know, but if, um, if you're uh, a light user to the Aquatics Fitness Center, like Rob said, is once again open. The new mechanical systems are operational. Contractors are still tweaking things um, and getting the bugs out, but I can tell you, like Rob said, uh, the water, at least in my opinion, definitely looks cleaner. And I've had uh, several unsolicited comments that, you know, the, wa the, the air seems less chlorinated. I mean, it's, it seems like a better um, environment to uh, air environment. So that was definitely some of the goals um, that we were trying to accomplish in this upgrade and um, I think we, we definitely seen the first uh, the leg of that of those goals being successful so I'm pretty happy about that um, in regards to our parks and facilities uh, some of you may or may not know but uh, we have a project to extend the west and center boat launch ramps at Riverside boat launch that construction is anticipated to begin on July 9th um, we will have at least one ramp open uh, for people to still use so the entire boat launch won't be closed off you can still use it uh, but just be warned if you're a user of the boat launch um, the west and the center ramp are going to be extended and this is going to help us so that we don't have in low water situations um, the situation where people are going back and be able to drop off the edge of the boat launch um, ramp so uh, that should be a definitely big improvement there if you recall, the Shadows and the Wolf financed a project to install a new fishing platform and a kayak slash canoe access point on the Embarrassed River, which was just off a of river road um, on, off of Highway 54, and this is on River Road just north of the do dog park. It appears that project is done. Um, I've sent a message, I left a message with the contact, my rep with the Shadows on the Wolf, just to verify that it's done. I haven't heard anything back from them, but I know people have been using it. It's pretty cool. Um, it's a nice uh, cantilever. Uh, a platform that goes over the embarrassed river um, allows people to uh, access the river there and the kayak long show once I hear back from them that's officially done then we'll probably get the word out more um, and I probably want to take some photo opportunities with the, the shadows to thank them for their for their contribution to our park system um, but definitely go check it out it's pretty cool um, Kent actually stole my thunder in a couple ones but just to add on the the new river wall dock that once that ramp is installed that will be an ADA accessible ramp so someone with a mobility challenge will be able to access that ramp. And then in regards to the Riverwall project itself, I do have a pre-construction meeting on Thursday. So at that point in time, I'll have a better timeline of the Riverwall project, uh, the, the rehab, um, and then what the necessary, uh, the needs are for any uh, access or um, alley closings that we may have to go through uh, during that project. So I will have some, hopefully some more information after our pre-construction meeting on Thursday. Uh, Steve Thompson talked about the Division Street a little bit. On, on our side, Sanitary Sewer Main has been um, installed from Beacon to Oak. They are working on installing the Storm Sewer Main. Um, this afternoon, they were at the intersection of Evergreen and Division, and I think they're going to be pretty close in finishing up installing the Storm Sewer Main at Oak Street. That's our ending point, hopefully tomorrow. Um, then they're ne they're, we are also done, I believe, with all the sanitary laterals that are along that stretch from Beacon to Oak. So the sanitary laterals are all done as well. The contractor will have to go back at Beacon and then start hooking up the, the catch basins from the storm sewer catch basins, those laterals, into the storm sewer main. So they're going to go back and start installing all those um, from Beacon and, and working their way south as well. And then uh, if, you're, if you live on the street, you probably saw that Wapaka County is working on the south side of division from Oak to Beckert. Um, they've been ripping out curb and gutter, and then the uh, concrete contractor is starting to do that spot repair and starting to put sidewalk in on that side. So uh, things are definitely proceeding um, with the Division Street project. But if you have any questions on Division Street, um, definitely check out the Public Works page on the city's webpage. I've been putting all the updates on that page. And then once uh, we get closer to the Downtown Riverwall project and the Boat Launch project, I'll probably create pages on the website as well just to kind of keep people up in the loop for things. And there's a really good feature on there if you want to just submit your email address. Every time I post an update, you get an email saying that there's been an update so you don't have to go back and check you know, every day um, to see if I posted anything. But that's been a really good communication piece during the project. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you, Chad. Next, Chief of Police, Chief Schlater. Thank you, Mr. Morak. I uh, just want to remind everyone that on Tuesday, August 7th, will be National Night Out here in New London. We're going to be doing it between the City Hall here and the Police Department, so come on down and visit us that night. And I also want to just talk briefly, uh, as technology changes, you're going to start seeing the way you get alerted for weather, for crisis, and situations like that. And 
in Wapak County, we have what's called Code Red in Outagamie County. It's, it's the ad hoc system. If you go online, you can either get access through our webpage or the county's webpage or the sheriff's department's webpage, and you can sign up for this. It takes about two minutes to do, and you can get weather alerts. If, for example, we have a situation going on that we need to get a message out to the citizens of New London, we can get the, that out to you very quick. You can receive the messages by text messages, by phone calls, by emails. So there's a bunch of different ways to be able to do it nowadays, and I would highly encourage everyone to try to get hooked up to that. And if you don't know how, talk to a friend, a relative, and they might be able to help you. And I will try to make sure that we repost those sites on our Facebook page and also make sure we have both of them on our web page here coming up soon. And then finally, with uh, the schools being out and stuff, I have noticed that there's a lot more bikers around. There's a lot more walkers and stuff like that. So I just want you to be aware of the crosswalks and stuff. Make sure you stop for people crossing the crosswalk. And that's about it. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Chet. Next, Fire Chief, Chief Wolfer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Morak. I just have one item tonight. Um, the fire department and I would like to thank the Shamrock Club for their generous donation of $10,000 uh, payable over two years uh, for the UTV that we plan on purchasing. So thanks to everybody at the Shamrock Club and everybody who supports the Shamrock Club. That's all I have. Very good. Okay. Thanks, Mark. All right. Uh, see, Jackie, did you have anything? No, no, nothing so. tonight. Any other comments? Tom, most, uh, Steve? Uh, we had a, a customer came down to the utility and they got a phone call asking them to send $350, go to Walgreens and send a $350 payment to them, otherwise your lights will be turned off. As it turned out, the customer did come down to the utility and asked what was going on. And we said, we don't do that type of business at the utility. And we were able to talk to the customer and not mailing the, the cards. Actually, they can't. we took the cash out, put them into the utility account, and we'll be refunding that back to the customer. But uh, we did get a call from a scammer who said, New London Utilities has taken my money. <laughs> <laughs> so we said, uh, we know you're a scammer. And that was the end of the conversation. It's out there. Someone calls you and says, go to Walmart or, or to uh, Walgreens and get a, a payment card to send it to me for the utility once or turn your lights off. That is not how we do business. That is a scam. Please be aware of that. <coughs> Very good. Mark, can I add on to that yep. real quick? Sure. Since we're talking about scamming and stuff like that, we receive calls on an everyday basis now at the police department. And I just want to remind people, as what Mr. Thompson said, is no one in government will ever take a payment through a gift card if that they're asking you to get gift cards and go and send them somewhere it's not legitimate um, if you didn't buy something or you didn't win the lottery if you didn't play the lottery you can't win the lottery um, we're seeing scams dealing with that they're calling people saying that their child or their nephew or whatever was locked up in jail down in Florida and they need to send money and they need to send it within the next 24 hours that's a scam all this stuff is a scam. If you ever have questions, please call the police department. We will talk to you. No one from the IRS will ever come to your house and throw you in jail if you don't pay money within so many hours. So please give us a call. We will confirm that it's a scam and uh, kind of go from there. But it's it's just one of those things. We're seeing people on a regular basis losing $10,000 plus dollars right here in New London. All right, thanks, Jeff. Any questions on those? Any other comments? All right, Tom, you made a motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. Fred seconds. All in favor? Before. Right. Motion is adjourned. Thank you.